Hi! Do you know that when I'm not vlogging or engaging in healthy activities, I'm an artist? I love to paint. That's my real addiction. And the hours just fly by, whether I'm painting or doing some other creative activity. But do you know that art is actually good for your brain? There was a scientist at the City College of London called Samir Zeki, and he found out that when you make art or you view art, your brain actually secretes dopamine. Dopamine is that feel-good chemist chemical. Do you like the feeling of being in love? Or do you um, like the way you feel when you eat your favorite food, such as a piece of chocolate? You secrete dopamine then, that feel-good chemical. It's also involved in the chemistry of reward and motivation. So it's involved also in addiction, like you know, shopping addiction or gambling addictions. So making art can make you feel good. That explains why I love making art. I love to paint. Among other things, it makes me feel good. It might also explain some of the odd characters we have in art. They probably are truly addicted to making art. Another study uh, that was done recently was by Ann Bolwick and her co-workers actually showed that art can change your brain for the better. The physical structure of your brain can change. They gathered individuals between the age of 62 and 70 who had been retired between three months and three years, not longer than three years. And once a week for a period of 10 weeks, they had two groups. One group went and viewed art at a museum for two hours and the others made art for two hours. And the result was that those who actively made art had better scores on a test of resilience. Uh, and also when they tested, they were able to find that parts of the brain communicated better with one another, specifically the frontal, the posterior, and temporal brain regions. They stated in their study that by 2030, one-fifth of Americans will be 65 or older. Having better resilience scores will help us as we encounter obstacles or illnesses in life. Anything we can do to keep the brain ticking along is important. A study at the University of Edinburgh found only 25% of brain aging is due to genetics and 75% is the result of lifestyle. Another study at the Massachusetts General Hospital led by Bradford Dickinson and Lisa Barrett found a group of adults that they termed superagers. They looked at 40 adults between the ages of 60 and 80 and found 17 who performed as well as adults four to five decades younger and 23 with results that we considered normal for their age. I think there's more and more evidence for that lose it or use it, use it or lose it theory, whether it's a muscle or your brain. So I've gathered a few of my favorite books to share. Well, I mainly do my own thing, having found my muse. These are where I started. And I really like doing something where you're expressing your own creativity rather than just coloring. That's just my preference. So I put a link to my blog page below where I list my favorite books and materials. But I'm just going to share a couple of the books that I have listed there. I have many, many more. Uh, one thing that I like is <clears throat> this book. It's The Art of Zentangle. And you can just open this up and use it with your coffee. And what it does is... Uh, it gives you like a template and it says, okay, let's try to make this design and it gives you blanks for uh, you to try it. And um, so if you haven't made art before, it gives you a good starting place. And I like this if you just want to go out on the deck in, a, in the morning with your coffee and just work on some perhaps silly characters. These are the silly characters that I did. So um, it's just fun. So uh, that's one. But... If you're a little bit more realistic, um, I like drawing on the right side of the brain, or I like uh, keys to drawing, uh, which, you know, there are a lot of things that people do when they first start drawing. For instance, they forget the skull, and you've got a massive uh, brain back here, so they always stop drawing the face about here. And when you start looking at drawing books like this, it gives you those tips and it, it tells you how your brain misinterprets some of the things. It tells you how your brain misinterprets some of the things that you want, you know, that you need to do for, for drawing. So I recommend Keys to Drawing. There's some great books for inspiration. Uh, there's one by Winston Churchill that I absolutely adore called Painting as a Pastime. Uh, but if you really want to go into depth and um, look into, like, the really where to 
like for instance, where did the great masters get their gesso and what did they made it out of the answer is marble. There was this wonderful book called The Materials of the Artist and Their Use in Painting. It's quite old, but it has just about every detail you'd want to know about painting and techniques over the ages. Um, I also love, for color theory, I love a book by Quiller, and I put that there in the, the links below as well. Uh, Quiller is one of my favorite with the Quiller palette. He uh, uses a lot of semi-neutral, and he actually gives tables, whether you're using watercolor or acrylics or, um, or oil paint, that tell you, you know, mix sap green with Genetian violet or whatever is in the media you're using because the color names are actually slightly different from watercolor and oil and acrylic. So as we finish up, I'm going to leave you with a montage of some of my paintings. Um, I don't consider myself the greatest artist, but I very much enjoy what I do, and now I know it makes my brain work better. See you next week.